Hello and welcome to Kendrick Farms. We're back with another episode of uh, Flint Hills by JS Mapping. And this is our precision farming uh, series. Last time we left off having wrapped up some tillage up on field 16 here. And I came to the realization that we've got probably a solid five hours of tillage left if we were to just to do that with our uh, current equipment. And so we went ahead and phoned up the dealer and talked to them about getting a demo for a little bit bigger tillage equipment here. And so we are leasing this uh, 9RX with the high speed, uh, I don't even know what this is, would be called. It's not quite vertical tillage, is it? Either way, we've got this 2680 uh, high speed, uh, we'll call it a disc here. And we're going to use that on this nice big long straight field. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to get a worker set up for this 9RX. And let uh, let them help us out here a bit. So that we can use this 8960 back up in the yard. And get a little bit of uh, slurry spreading done on a couple of our fields here. And start checking out how these nitrogen mechanics are going to work. And so we're going to just fold this up and get it out of the way here real quick so that we can get this 9RX in here and going uh, on these this nice long straight field. Hopefully, given that this thing has the additional speed, it's going to be able to really knock out some acres pretty quick. So let's go ahead and get this. Oh, I have got manual attach on. We forgot our hoses. There we go. It always helps when you have the hydraulics on to uh, unfold things. So while that's unfolding, we're gonna go ahead and grab a course. Field 25, we're gonna do uh, two headland passes. We're gonna start working on our long rows. And in this case, we're gonna try this skip row functionality um, this thing is a little bit wider, um, but given that we're using an articulated vehicle here, I think I'm going to go ahead and just use the skip rows and see how that does. And that's a lot of passes, but hopefully this is going to work out. Let me come back into course generation. Where's my start point? All right, we've played around with the course a little bit to get it set up so I can actually start where I am. And so we're going to go ahead and tell this guy to get going here. It is starting to get dark, so um, he's got his lights coming on here. And it looks like this is going to do a good job of chopping up this uh, crop residue and leaving us a nice even seed bed here. And so we forgot to look and see how long it's going to take him to do this job. Out of curiosity, two hours, 13 minutes, that's uh, quite the improvement over where we were. So we're going to let him do his thing and run back down to the farm with our 8960. So we're back up here in the yard, and I think what we're going to do is twofold. One, I do want to get some slurry spread but before we jump into that we're gonna go ahead and hook this 8rx up to the turbo chisel here and send him off to get started on our uh, other field here i think this thing is gonna have more than enough horsepower to uh, use this turbo chisel and uh, get us with a, another piece of equipment out in the field doing something productive while we uh, work on some of our odd jobs here. I think uh, one of the fun parts of running a, far a larger size farm is going to be trying to keep everything moving um, and not necessarily doing every job ourselves to completion. Um, looking at uh, all of the fields that we have here, actually if I bring up the map, between field 16, 21, 25, and 26, we actually have 500 acres, um, actually uh, closer to 510 acres across all of those fields. And so 
uh, it, by farm some standards, that's a pretty good sized farm. Uh, you know, real life, that's, you know, not necessarily that big of a farm, but uh, uh, farm sim wise, you know, we've got a fair amount of acres here, so we're going to be keeping ourselves busy. And uh, who knows, we might actually decide to expand our land a little bit as we um, keep going here. And so we're going to take kind of the same approach that we've been taking and um, do two headland passes, skip some rows, and see how that's going to work out for us. Uh, it looks like everything is set up the way I would want it and it looks like this guy's gonna take a little over an hour so um, that'll be a good thing to have running in parallel to our other tillage equipment it looks like that 9rx made the turnaround here without any problems we do have this fence to contend with so a uh, little bit concerned about that just wanting to make sure that we don't end up with a bunch of equipment stuck in the fence so I'm pretty happy with that and this guy's going to town no problems so for whatever reason uh this turbo chisel it puts itself back down as soon as you start to turn again i was hoping that doing the skip rows was going to solve that problem but it's still doing it so i don't know what's going on with that it must be something with this implement but it works so i'm not too worried about it i like using a little bit different equipment and so this is a pretty cool uh, little turbo chisel. So I think we're going to keep using it. It's not game breaking and it doesn't really slow us down any. So why not? But with that, let's go ahead and jump back over to the 8960 and see about uh, spreading some slurry and how those nitrogen mechanics are going to work in the precision farming DLC. All right. So we've got the... Uh, noon quad quad tanker I don't know what QT stands for but uh, we've got the slurry spreader all hooked up here we've got it filled up with slurry and so I think what we're gonna do is uh, actually take this down to field 16 that we just plowed up and kind of get a feel for how far this uh, slurry is gonna go uh, because I'm not sure how far 10,000 gallons is going to get us, especially with the Precision Farming DLC installed here. I know it auto-adjusts you to a flat rate for slurry, uh, so I just don't know what that flat rate is, and I'd rather get one field completely uh, fertilized properly and uh, rather than you know just do part of uh, this big field 21, because I don't think there's any way we're going to have enough slurry to do the entirety of field uh, 21 here um, we had just enough to fill up these tanks uh, from my playing around with the uh, pigs and getting things set up and so really this is just a trial and then we'll have a lot more slurry by the uh, time we get to fall uh, will be the next time that we're kind of spreading slurry but I really wanted to give this a shot since it's a new mod to me and a new mechanic with the precision farming DLC
so we're back up here in the yard and we're just gonna put uh, these tanks down it looks like I've got some kind of shader issue here with this uh, hog barn but uh, there were not a lot of uh, options when it came to hog enclosures so we're going to live with a little bit of graphical anomaly here and go ahead and take this thing back up to the yard here I think given that that is all of the um, manure spreading we're going to be able to do or slurry spreading we're going to be able to do um, our next job is going to be to cultivate that field and get it ready for planting we've still got a, a couple of days before we could even get into the field so we're not in a super hurry yet but I do want to keep knocking these jobs out as fast as we can uh, because with a farm this size we're gonna feel the pressure when it gets into uh, planting time where we're gonna want to get all of our crops in really quick and we don't have a lot of planting equipment right now um, we've only got the one planter I guess we have the cedar as well in there so we're gonna want to uh, figure out uh, how long that's gonna take and I think that's another job where we're gonna end up picking up some more equipment um, however before we run this uh, up to field 16 there which is where I want to do this uh, cultivating let's just jump over here and take a quick look and see how our guy in the 9rx is doing it looks like he's doing a lot of backing up here as he turns around which is unfortunate because that takes so much time and so we up the speed a little bit here on uh, uh, whatchamacallit on course play so hopefully he'll at least be able to back up faster he is doing good on these alternating rows so no complaints there he's really clipping along here at 13 miles an hour trying to get just above that it's uh, flashing a little bit here if we look at course play bump this up a little bit course play has a bug where it's actually kilometers here even though it says miles per hour so um, I always like to bump that up a little bit faster than I think I need to and then uh, I wanted to check on the 8rx as well just based on the mini map it looks like he's doing pretty good he's flying right along here um, we're gonna do the same thing here and just bump him up a little bit it looks like he's doing all right though um, he's not having to back up he's making his turns uh, pretty much normally so we're gonna let these guys do their thing and I'm gonna hop back over here into the 8960 and we're gonna run this up to our field again here and see if we can at least get this guy set up um, to start knocking out this field with the cultivator I'm kind of curious how long that job's gonna take and uh, go from there we're losing our daylight fast here as the Sun goes down although it's kind of interesting that it's getting so dark even though the Sun is relatively high in the sky still um, I think that the sunset mechanics need a little bit of work still um, I don't think I've used this particular field cultivator before but this is a nice wide uh, implement so I'm really curious to see how well this is gonna work uh, we're gonna go ahead and limit ourselves to two headland passes um, I don't think I need to skip rows with something this wide we're gonna try this and uh, see how it works for us I'd rather do straight up and down rows can I do like this there we go we're gonna do that see how it works Ooh, that's got some nice yellow lighting um, which is a pretty realistic because uh, I drove some of this older equipment it definitely at least didn't come with LED lighting so it has that nice yellowish hue to it I'm kind of curious to see how fast this thing is gonna go I guess I didn't look 34 minutes yeah that's gonna be a lot easier to work with um, 
I'm thinking maybe I do need to skip rows after all. I wouldn't normally do that with something this wide, I don't think. Let's, uh, let's take one more pass. Let's see how he does on the end here. I think he's going to be okay. There we go. He's doing okay. I don't think that's a problem. And he's picking it up and putting it down in a sane way. So if I come in here and look at the advanced settings, I think I saw some settings. Raise implements, lower implements. Start when to raise implements when ending a row. I would want to raise it late. and lower it early. Let's try that. So that definitely raised better. I'm kind of curious to see what lower early means. Yeah, I like that a lot better. At least on the straight parts on the end rows, that seems like it's going to work out quite a bit better. On this curvy area up here, I think course play just gets a little bit weird, so we're going to let it do its thing. And uh, I think with that, we've done a lot of uh, starting jobs uh, so far, so we're going to let these uh, workers go, I think, a little bit off camera since uh, they've got an hour ish each to run here still and we'll check back in on uh, our progress on all of this tillage next episode it is getting kind of dark here so um, trying to record in the dark never works out well for us so um, we may uh, pause some of these workers let them go home for the night here in another hour or so and wrap these jobs up next episode that's all for today Kedrick out <laughs>